Are you struggling to find space for your preps? We've got some great ideas for you. Hey, Provident Preppers, I'm Jonathan. And I'm Kyleen. We were invited to speak at a community preparedness fair in Kearns, Utah, and we recorded it for you, but the sound, there's just too much background noise. So the message is great. So we have recreated it for you right here. Let's not forget that the small steady steps are the things that move the mountains. So as we were preparing this presentation, we wanted to find out what kind of mountains are, are stopping people from getting the job done. And so we did a little survey. In this survey, we had 1,200 people respond. And what we wanted to know was what is your greatest obstacle when it comes to preparing for disasters and building your food storage? And the results were so interesting. We, we lined these out, right? We said time, money, lack of family support, skills, knowledge, information, or other. And 58% it was money. And that, that's a common across the board, right? But what was really interesting were the comments under other. And that was pretty eye-opening for us because over and over and over and over, the lack of adequate space to get the job done was one of the significant obstacles that people were facing. And so we wanted to focus on that today. And another one was the disability and physical strength or limitations. But today we are, that's a, something for another day. Today we're going to focus just on adequate storage space. we got to solve this problem and work a few miracles, right? So having great shelving is a wonderful thing to help you get this job done. These have all kinds of ability to adjust height. And so you can, you can optimize how you store your food or other important things and, and you, utilize your space the best way you can. So shelving takes that same amount of horizontal space and by making it vertical, it can, you know, times it by four or five or six. And that's why shelving is just a really great thing. And if you look at these shelves, this is from our friend, Debbie. Thanks, Debbie. And um, these are just ones that you go and you purchase at the hardware store. Now, when you do purchase shelving, you've got to be careful about whether, uh, you know, what the load is, right? Jonathan will always tell us about load bearing. Absolutely, yeah, you don't, you can't overload these. And in addition to that, the safety guy here is going to tell you that if you're an earthquake country, you probably want to anchor those to the wall as well. So this is really cool. This is actually um, at my daughter's house. And this is a little space underneath the stairs and it goes straight and then those stairs curve and it, pretty much this is a little bit of a useless area and what they did is they took and just these cd or dvd shelves that they had gotten and they lined the wall with them so that they could store different kinds of food and they just did a really good job of even that little space at the end where it's really hard to store anything taking advantage of that now when our girls went off to college um they have this little one bedroom place with a bathroom and almost no storage space. And for a prepper, that's really hard to put your kids into that situation. And so we've done a few things that we'll show you in this video, but one of them was just this really inexpensive over the toilet shelving rack. Yeah. And the ability to utilize that space above the toilet was a, a real lifesaver for them. It provided them plenty of space to take care of what they needed there. All right, and this is what Jonathan designed for our bathroom. So let me explain something. So in our bathroom, we have a little toilet closet because a toilet closet is really good for a marriage when you just have, the, so there's just nothing in there except for the toilet. And in this case, a whole bunch of toilet paper. So right over the door, we had some unused space and we did the same thing. We created a shelf there that holds a year's supply of toilet paper and feminine products for four people. So a space that was otherwise unused suddenly became very valuable. And the construction here was super simple. So it's just a piece of shelving that was cut exactly the length of this little closet area. And then he put some what cleats. Is, cleats, just some cleat board on the sides. And um, 
that's all it amounts to. And it should have been painted. It still to this day isn't painted, but... It's on the list. The toilet paper's there, and it is very conveniently located. And, again, from the safety guy, that's okay to have that right above because that's all light stuff. If it came off, it's not going to hurt anybody. And so it was just an ideal place to do this. And this is what some of our friends did. So they grow a lot of their own squash, but they don't have a root cellar, right? And they were trying to figure out a way to make it last. Well, they have a basement bathroom that was no longer being used very often. And so they decided they would like, look, there's a plastic shelves right there inside the bathtub. So what they do is all winter long, they leave this window in here cracked, not very wide, right? Just a little bit. Um, but that keeps all of this cool, cool enough and they've got the airflow in between these squash and quite frankly, they've had them last well over a year and we have been the beneficiaries of some of this squash. It's, it's amazing. So, you know, just, we've got to think creatively. And in addition to, uh, the open window, they had to shut off the heating vent in there. So oh, true. you just true. need to shut that off. Uh, seal that off so you're not getting heat in but what a wonderful way to use some space that was just sitting idle yeah okay now this is my kitchen pantry um my house is actually fairly small and we have a lot of people um and this how big is this room john probably about five by eight so it's, it's really not very big but what we did is we put these built-in shelves in and we built them from floor to ceiling so if you look in this picture on the left the stuff that I have there, literally some of it touches the ceiling. We're not letting any of that space go to waste. And then when you move to the center photo, you'll see that uh, like the number 10 cans, these are cans that are open that I use in my everyday cooking. And there's not much extra space there, just enough space to slide things in and out. And the same thing with the buckets. We just planned it so it wasn't hard to get it in and out but it, it made it so that um, we weren't wasting any space because when you don't have much space, you can't afford to waste any. And this is my mother's storage room. And again, the same thing, very narrow area, it, not much of the house space, but they were able to put shelves on either side and just enough aisleway to comfortably get things in and out. So very, very good job of optimizing space. Okay, so let's move on from shelves to utilizing the space under your bed because everybody sleeps, right? So there is always a little bit of space underneath the bed. Now, in this photo, what we have here, these are 12 cases of number 10 cans. And quite frankly, that can be survival rations for whoever sleeps in that bed from the time they're old enough to sleep in it until they go off to college. And so this is a really good way of making sure that you have that food security and making it so we don't have to clean under the bed. There are other kinds of little boxes and trays. This was just an ideal one. This one has little wheels on the one side, so it's very easy to slide in and out. And it will hold, probably you could put a two-week supply of food in here for one person. Um, and a couple of those, you'd have enough for two people for two weeks. Again, it's just an opportunity to maximize the space that we have. And this is underneath a, a I can't remember if it's a queen size or a king size bed. I think it was a king size bed. But these boxes just slid right under there. And he's, of course, got his little baseball bat for protection. But that's all it took, just sliding these underneath there. And imagine how many cases under a king size bed. That's a lot of good food storage space. And I love this one. This is one of my very favorite pictures. So this is from Marie. And her son, Oliver, she's a single mom and she's doing the, trying to do the best she can with small spaces. And what she did is underneath both her bed and Oliver's bed, they have these buckets of food storage. And I love how she's like tucked stuff in between these buckets. So she's taken advantage of every little bit of space that she can. So while you might not think, okay, it's only under the bed, seriously, there is enough food under here to feed each one of them for at least a year. Now we're talking basic survival rations, right? But this is, this is a really good work. Another thing that we did for our daughters and our son when we took them off to college is because we were quite concerned with the small space that they were living in and we wanted them to have 
at least a couple of weeks of food and water um, for emergency purposes. So we got these little risers. They were only about $10 for four of them. So for each bed, we were able to create a whole bunch of good space under there that we could put water, food, and other important things. And didn't take any extra space out of the room. I think that's really important. This one belonged to Sam. So his looks different than the girls, um, but and what he had under it was different from the girls, but still a great way to utilize space underneath the bed. And then when it comes to water storage, water is so important and people are always looking for ways to store water. The photo on the left is actually underneath a, um, my friend Betty's bed. And what she does is she fills up soda bottles after they've used them. She cleans them out really well and fills them up with water. And then she just stores them underneath her bed on the side, just like this. Doesn't take up any extra room, but she knows she has water storage when she needs them. And these are the girls' beds in their little dorm room. But you can see that we put cases of water bottles under there. And then, okay, so those risers, quite frankly, they're a little bit... Um, unstable. Un yeah. Unstable is a good word. Yeah. yeah. They're a little bit unstable. And so, like, if you jump on the bed, it's possible you're going to make it collapse. But we found these. Yeah, these are just available out there in the marketplace. These are just taller bed frames. And these are very, star very strong and very stout. These are tall enough that we can fit five gallon buckets underneath. And what a great way to maximize some space. And this, is, this one's just a little bit different, but this one is actually our bed. So Jonathan and I have enough food underneath our bed in these different buckets for a year supply of survival rations, but it doesn't take any more space out of our room. And I think that's the beauty of this. All right, let's move on from underneath the bed to how about improvised furniture out of boxes. Now, a lot of times food storage will come in these boxes that are just, they're like kind of like little Legos. They, they stack really, really well. So what could we possibly do with them? Well, this photo credit goes to Kevin in Washington, but the creative genius behind it goes to Lana and also the construction. But what they did is they took these different boxes, like what you can get at Costco or Sam's Club, and they filled them with food. And then Lana made this really cool cover for it so that it's just kind of blends in with their home. It doesn't scream, I'm food storage, I'm food storage. And um, it, I think this is a great way to make some kind of furniture out of um, your food storage. Now, this one is a really fun idea, too. Yeah, this was really great. This was our daughter in Arizona, and she wanted to have theater seating. And so she had these two couches. Um, they've got this big projection screen up, up in front of them. Um, and she had these up on cinder blocks, which made me kind of a little nervous with little kids running around. And if those get knocked just right and come off on somebody. Once again, the safety um, guy. Yeah, absolutely. And so we came up with this pretty cool solution to just use food storage under there that gives nobody a place to, to crawl in and hide or a, you know, a place where they're going to get caught or it's going to fall on them. And then we created a little skirt. Now mama can tell you about the skirt. Now the, the skirt was really easy. So we just found some little suede fabric and we finished one side of it. And then we had Jonathan actually stapled it to the bottom and then we just kind of flipped it over so you couldn't see that. That's how a lot of furniture is created. And it actually looks really good. Nobody knows that that's food storage under there. And it made the whole situation better. So, you know, sometimes we just got to think out of the box a little bit. And how about a wall of food storage? These boxes could easily be stacked up floor to ceiling all along one side of a room. And then if you want, you could, because this looks a little bit tacky, right? But you could cover it with a sheet or something just to make it look a little bit more appealing. And think about the amount of food storage that you ha could have, and yet it's only taking a couple feet out of your room. All right, now let's think, you gotta be creative. We just gotta really think about what unused space could we possibly have in the home that we could use for food storage or to store other things that are important. And how about empty suitcases? Do you have any empty suitcases lying around? Are there other places that maybe um, you could add some, some storage space? 
Maybe sometimes it means that you need to get rid of some of the things that you have to make room for the things that are really important. So this is another great space saving place is right above your garage door. This is space that is not available for any other use, um, but we are in the process of creating some racks and there will be a video coming on this, but we're creating some racks to go right above here that will increase this by 144 square feet and those will be about a foot and a half tall. So that's a lot of space that's available and that goes along with the shelving that we have on the walls. We are in the process of maximizing the garage space without any inconvenience. It's just allowing us to really optimize what we have. And Mike is our inspiration. Like our son, Mike, remember the Provident Prepper Jr.? So he's our inspiration. Check out what he's done here. Yeah, this is the same kind of thing. His will be a, a little different than mine, and we'll contrast those when we do this video coming up. But he created a massive amount of space because they live in a smallish home, um, but this created so much space for their storage. Now, one thing I should mention about the garage is that the garages in a lot of areas get really cold in the winter and really hot in the summer. So things that are temperature sensitive, you probably don't want to put in there. But, but we generally have a lot of things that aren't temperature sensitive that can go in there. Blankets, um, even toilet paper, a whole variety of things that it's not going to matter if they get hotter or colder. They just store just fine. And then Jonathan and the boys put together these really cool sheds for me. I actually have two of them, but their goal was actually not very um, altruistic. They wanted to kick me out of the garage because I have all my crazy plant lady stuff. And yet this is a much better solution because I'm able to store all that stuff that's taking up space in the garage, but I can have it closer to where I'm going to be using it. But think about this you might be able to benefit. I wouldn't store food in these because they get really hot out there. But if you don't have a good garage space, you know, I think these were what, $600, five or $600 something, something at Costco. Um, but you can usually purchase them in the spring and that could expand some of your storage space, taking it out of your hot house and putting it into your yard. Just a thought. All right, now this one's kind of really fun. How about burying containers in the ground? We have had the root cellar for several years now, and it has worked extremely well. Um, so we decided to do another one, and this one is actually even bigger. And so it's going in the ground. We're going to make a nice cover for it. But we put these potatoes in there the end of September, first part of October, and we don't take them out, uh, the last of them out, until usually late April. And this just does an amazing job of allowing us to store these potatoes. Yeah, it's crazy. But so when we were gifted another um, freezer, we're like, yes, yes, yes. We couldn't wait to, to get it in the ground, but we do ventilate it, right? And so make sure that video is going to be coming out. We have one already posted, um, but there'll be a new one on some of the new and improvements that he's making. But um, check that out. Now, this is our friend Randy, and he's done this really cool job. All these are are these little um, barrels. What size are 15 they? gallon. 15 gallon barrels. And he's drilled holes in the side. If you look really closely, you can see those. And he's put them into the ground. And then he's got like a layer of um, leaves or some type of um, mulch on the very bottom. And he puts his potatoes in there and stores them all winter long and just puts the lid on it. Now these, you can tell right behind Randy, there's still one in the ground. He's got one in front of him open, but then there's another one that isn't open. And what, what a great idea, right? With these, the snow actually falls on them and it'll have piles of snow on them and the potatoes are fine. I was surprised that it would work that well. But um, so there's this is another option. Ventilation is really important if you're putting food in there. And now this is a buried metal garbage can. There are not holes in the side, but there are, are drainage holes in the bottom. And this it belongs to Uncle George. And what he does, this is how he keeps his beets and he just layers the beets with um, different leaves, right? And organic matter. And he just leaves, layers them, puts that lid on. And then he puts this pallet on top and he covers the pallet with mulch and his um, beets will stay all winter long in there. So he can come and take them out as he needs them. And that's, it's just an awesome way to go. Now, one of the things that we want to caution you on is that these are intended for 
um, fruits and vegetables because they need that humidity, right? You could put other things in these, in these containers, but you're going to have a moisture problem. So I would make sure that if you're going to do that, you put them like in mylar um, or something that is waterproof. Because if you put a number 10 can down there, um, chances are it's going to rust. You could, if the container was, you know, if you didn't have any holes in it at all, and you could maybe use some desiccant and do it. I don't know for certain how that would work, but mylar would be a good option in something like that. Okay, so let's move on. Let's think about one other thought that we have for you, and that's, okay, select devices that can be used every day and for emergency. So sometimes in our life, we have all this stuff set aside for emergency and this stuff that we use every day. And the lights that we have um, are a good example of that. So you, I'm sure you all know that I'm a huge fan of hybrid light. And by the way, if you use the promo code Provident with anything you buy there, you always get 20% off. They are so good to do that for me because we love you guys. But um, so this is actually my office window and I keep these lights in there all the time. When I need a flashlight or a task light or when the power goes out, I know right where these are and they're always charged up. So um, think about different things that you can do for both every day and emergency. And okay, this is Kenny and this is per college dorm. And when they went away, we were worried about emergency lighting and there's not room for one more thing. But one thing we found were these light bulbs and you can just screw them in your regular lamp. But the reason why they're so good is because if there's a power outage, then you can unscrew them and they're, they're portables. You can take them with you and they will provide light in the emergency. And for a dorm room where you like you just can't have any extra stuff. It was nice that this was an emergency item that didn't take up any additional space at all. We all encounter obstacles as we try and do what we know that we should do. If you verbalize that or, or understand that you do need to solve this little problem, you usually have a, a myriad of ideas that come to help you do that. And that's what we're all about. It's all about taking one step at a time and making progress. We sure hope that you got some great ideas and maybe stimulated some really good thought process. One of the things I want to show you what we did here when we built our fireplace, instead of having a normal hearth, we actually built a little cabinet in here. Now, I would never store food here because it's so close to the fireplace, but this is where we keep a whole bunch of blankets ready to go, which means that my linen closet is freed up to store whatever I need it to. So that's really cool. Now for the question of the day. What great ideas do you have that you can share? Comment below. And thanks for being part of the solution.